I'm often accused of cherry-picking the Bible, and rightly so. They say, Noah, there's some really good stuff in the Bible, but you overlook all of that, and you obsess over the parts with genocide and rape and divinely sanctioned baby murder and people being turned into salt and nut-grabbing prohibitions and scores of children being massacred by bears. Now, I suppose that in my defense, it would be fair to point out that Christians are at least equally guilty of overlooking all the genocide and rape and infanticide and homicidal salinization and ursine bloodbaths and obsessing over the good stuff. In fact, I'd submit that when there's a prophecy of a zombie apocalypse in your book, focusing on any other part is kind of off target. But I have to admit that both atheists and Christians are guilty of cherry-picking the Bible. In a book that long and rambling, I suppose that there's going to be something there to support any view you have. That being said, I think atheists can justify the assertion that the Bible is, overall, an evil, horrible, demonically misguided book. And I think we can make that case even if we have to set aside all the aforementioned butchery and carnage. Hell, let's just look at the most sanitized selection of biblical nuggets we can find. Let's just focus on those Bible stories that Christians tell their kids. How about Jesus died for your sins? Because it's never too early to learn about politically motivated false accusations that lead to brutal capital punishment, right? How about the Exodus? It's never too early to get historical perspectives from a slave narrative that makes Django Unchained look like a fucking documentary. How about the story of Jericho, where the heroic Joshua kills all the men, women, children, and fucking animals, except for a family of turncoats that helped the Israelites in the aforementioned Holocaust against their own neighbors and their own neighbors' pets. And lastly, the most ubiquitous of all the kid-friendly Bible stories, Noah's Ark, the single most horrible story ever imagined by humankind. Here we have a story where God throws a temper tantrum so bad that it ends up killing all but a high school basketball team's worth of people. He was so pissed at the humans that he killed all but two of the Patagonian screaming hairy armadillos, for fuck's sake. We're not just talking about everybody dropping dead one day, either. God could have done that if he wanted to, but no. He decided he wanted to flood the whole fucking world. Some of them are going to be smashed to death with logs and debris. Some other people will drown quickly. Others will swim for hours or even float clinging to something for days before eventually succumbing to dehydration or being picked to death by scavengers. You know, consider legendary director Michael Curtiz, who had reenacted this disaster in a 1928 film. He, he decided that the coolest way to get the shot would be to tell all the extras to just act casual and then dump millions of gallons of water on the set with no warning. Now, sure, he did manage to capture the genuine horror of such a moment. In fact, three of the extras were so inspired by this directorial decision that they improvised their own deaths. Granted, we've largely forgiven Curtis because Casablanca was so fucking good, but I think we can all agree that flooding the set was the work of a deranged psychopath. Now, this killed three people. I should point out that none of these people were infants, either. I'm not trying to excuse what he did, but doesn't that make him less evil than God by at least seven orders of magnitude? More if you count the animals. And don't give me that whole Michael Curtis was upset with them because of their sin nonsense, either. And keep in mind that the story doesn't end with the flood either. It goes all Fifty Shades of Incest a few chapters later when Dad starts with the drinking again. Noah's Ark is a horrible, awful, disgusting, repugnant story, but it's the one that makes the cover on most books of children's biblical stories. Now I ask you, if that's the best you can do for a kid's story, how can you possibly argue that this book is anything but terrible?